Welcome back YouTube. Hope you guys are having a good day. I know I'm having a better day than I have been in a long time. And mainly for the fact of this right here, I've gotten a new camera. No longer will I be shooting with this stupid old GoPro. That thing can sit there and charge forever and ever and ever and I won't care. I hate that thing. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. At the end of this video guys, I am gonna give you a running DeLorean that will cold start that will do everything it's supposed to do as long as we don't have a major component failure. Last night I printed out a vacuum diagram and an engine harness diagram. And this should help us figure out what we have going on, why this car won't run. I have a couple ideas and if you notice, I wrote some notes down here and here and here of areas I believe to be what we need to focus on. So without further ado, I'm going to grab the vacuum diagram and as I go through the diagram, I'm going to let you guys know what I've found. I already know where there's one problem and it's going to be with this cold start valve. The one thing I saw on the vacuum diagram, if you see right here, there's supposed to be two vacuum hoses going to it. As you can see, we only have one vacuum hose and that's just the top hose. So down below here, right there, there's a nipple and that's got nothing on it. And it's coming from one of these hoses here. I don't know which one yet. I haven't worked my way through that. And also this ground wire that's been hanging out, I think I figured out where it's coming from. I believe it's the regulator ground, which is this piece back here. That's what I keep switching. When I need to start it, I take this harness, I take this harness right here off of the regulator and I put it on the cold start valve. What that does is puts 12 volts from that regulator to the startup valve, and, you know, this the cold start valve, and that just pumps raw fuel into here and we'll get it running. Not the right way, but I believe once we fix the vacuum leak there and we get this ground wire hooked up and a few other things. I think we're gonna be on track to having a car that runs. Now, someone told me to check, and I don't know where it is, but I'm gonna check that hole and make sure there's something in it. I don't know if that's what he's talking about or not, but I'm gonna check that here in a minute and see if that is missing, whether it be a plug or a screw or, or whatever. I'm gonna check that. That might be a source of a vacuum leak as well. We've got a lot of stuff to check, a lot of stuff to go over, but I'm really excited because I think, I think, I think, I think we're on the right track. And once we get done with this part of it, I have the brake calipers rebuilt. That video should be up either before this one or the video after this one, which will be the next day. I've had some editing problems, I've lost some footage, but I think we can scrape a, a video together just to give you a general idea of what it takes to rebuild brake calipers. It was a very easy process, guys. I was shocked how easy it was. So that will be coming hopefully next couple days. But today's video is all about getting this thing running. I know it's been a long time. I've had some stuff come up, but we're gonna get back into it. We're gonna hit it hard for the rest of the week. But I'm hoping tonight I can reach in there, grab the key, be cold, and fire this sucker right up. As we do, will be more than worth it because I have spent so much time on this car and I want to get a payoff. You know, if nothing for you guys to watch it, it means a lot to me to be able to bring this to you guys because believe it or not, this pays my bills. Getting rid of this thing will pay the rent. So I have to keep moving forward, we keep moving forward projects. And this has stalled out on me so many times. I mean, I have fought everything tooth and nail. You guys have seen some of it. A lot of stuff you haven't seen because it'd just be boring. Small stuff, bolts missing. Uh, I, I went ahead and fixed the exhaust manifold because the that had a huge exhaust leak on it and the nut was missing. Who knows how long it's been missing? I don't have a clue. But the little stuff is what's gonna take me forever. The big stuff shouldn't take that long. Getting it started is kind of a big thing, but there's so many small things wrong that it's caused me to not be able to get it running. Now, I am gonna turn the fan on here in a little bit. You guys see me sweating. I sweat. It's Florida, it's 95 degrees, 100% humidity. I'm dying and I've only been in this shop about 15 minutes and I'm soaked. So I'm gonna turn the fan on, I'm gonna start doing some stuff. When I find something, I will get back with you guys and let you know. 
we've worked on this thing for a little while and made some progress. So what we've done is we had a line coming out of the vacuum chan uh, we had a line coming out of the vacuum canister and it wasn't hooked up. It wasn't hooked up. This is the uh, startup cold start solenoid. The vacuum line was unhooked. That wasn't hooked up and we found the place for that black wire. We went ahead and tapped it onto that spot. I believe that's where it goes. Can't really find a clear, concise answer for that. And we've just kind of generally gone over everything, kind of from the top side looking down, making sure everything's hooked up the way it should be. The only thing I can't find right now is I can't find this thermal control valve, nor can I find, it's hard seeing this through the viewfinder. There is, there is a hose that runs from that tap right there see it goes down and everything goes the thermal control valve problem I've run into is my manifold tap goes down towards the front of the transmission what I'm gonna do here in a little bit we're gonna start it up and see if we've made any progress I don't believe that we've made enough to make the thing run so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the manifold the distributor manifold pull all this back apart for the one bazillionth time and see what we find i need to be able to find the thermal control valve and make sure that the hoses go where they need to because they're not I'm, I'm pretty sure that since this taps into the control pressure regulator which needs to see vacuum at idle to make this thing run i'm hoping that's where the issue is but we're going to get in here and see if we made any progress Got the battery hooked up. Put the key in. All right. Once again, well, I can tell you it starts up a whole lot quicker. Man, it sounds a lot nicer, but I'm still hearing a massive vacuum leak. Okay. So we know we've made zero progress. The only other question I have, and I've got to look this up, is there's a hole. There is a hole right here. And I don't, you guys really can't, there's a hole right here. And that goes down into the fuel distributor. There's nothing in it. I can't find if there's any threads, I can't see down there far enough to see if there's threads. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to feel them and I just don't know if I'm feeling them or not. It doesn't feel like it. Maybe. I don't know. If anybody knows if that's supposed to be tapped, plugged, bolt, if there's a fitting that goes in it, vacuum fitting, I don't know what goes there because I don't have one. But if anybody knows anything about that hole, let me know. Leave it in there. There was a guy that uh, posted that I had, a, had something missing. I'm thinking he was talking about this hole here but he may have been talking about this hole. If, if that guy comes back, can you please send me a DM and let me know what goes there? I'm gonna be looking to see if I can find it. But in the meantime, if you happen to see this video, at least respond, send me a DM. Because I had this, uh, I had the fuel distributor built by um, Specialty Auto, and I can't imagine leaving that out if it needs to be, be there to run, who knows. Only thing really left to do at this point is pull the the, um, the fuel distributor and manifold off and see if I can find that th thermal control valve. I need to be able to find that, make sure our hoses are run right, and then we're going to run a test on it. That's going to be coming up. Let me get this thing pulled off, and we will um, we'll get down to the bottom and see if we find that valve. We went digging for the thermal control valve, and I finally found it. This diagram is just a little misleading. The fact is, it's not what we're digging for. They're showing right here. Well, it ends up that it's about right here, but it's buried under the intake manifold. You guys can see, that's the intake manifold here. There's the runner for the manifold. I'm gonna try to get in there. I don't know if I can or not. At least, You can't really see it at all, but between this intersection, between
between the intersection of these three hoses. Under that, you'll see some vacuum lines. Back under there is where the thermal control valve is. Found it, the hoses are hooked up correctly, as they should be. The one thing I did find is this vacuum hose right there was not hooked up. I don't know if I did that when I slid, when I slid all this forward to be able to get access back there. Put it back together, I'll put that on it and see. Then I guess I'm just gonna have to check for vacuum leaks and we're gonna do that here in a minute with the machine I have. Let me get this back together, double check it, try to start it again, see what happens. If not, we're gonna to go to plan B and that's going to be check for vacuum. All right guys, so what we've done is I've borrowed this machine right here and these are the most wonderful things in the world. Basically what this is is a smoke machine for intakes. And what it does is it fills all of the vacuum ports, whether it be intake, um, any of the vacuum hoses, any of the solenoids, it fills the entire system up with smoke. And it's really cool, really neat, really effective. We found a couple problems so far. The first being the actual intake itself. You can see it's got a leak somewhere around there. And I don't feel a seal, so I'm thinking that's okay. That should allow a smidge of air through there, I would imagine. So I don't imagine it's gonna have a perfect seal. But in one of my previous videos, somebody mentioned this, and I didn't know whether it needed to have a plug or not, but it looks like it does. Maybe this is an air fuel mixture. I don't know what it does yet. I've got to find out. Tonight's going to be a little bit of research. But you can see that thing's just pouring smoke out. Need to fix these two holes. Um, we'll, we'll just get a cap to put over that for now. That should solve that one. And then let this thing continue building pressure. See if we can find any more leaks anywhere else in the system. But these have been the two biggest ones so far. I had another vacuum leak under the intake. You can't see it, so there's no reason to even talk about it. But I fixed that one. As soon as I fixed that one, these two started leaking. And I can see these two being big issues. We're going to, at this point, I'm going to see if I can find something to plug that up with. And then try starting a car again. I'm not sure what that is. Like I said, I'll go home tonight and let you guys know what I find. But between these two, the other leak, she's got some vacuum leaks. Surprisingly, there's nothing leaking back here. It's, it's only relegated to the fuel distributor and the uh, intake. But as far as I can see, nothing else looks like it's smoking from anywhere. And actually, looking through the camera, I can see it better than I can with my eye. Let me get these two plugged up, see what I can do about that one for sure, and get back to you guys in a few. All right, guys, welcome back. I think we found at least a very large problem. We got the smoke machine on and I have fixed pretty much every leak I can. But this thing started leaking here towards the end. Let me get some better light. This thing started leaking. And I couldn't figure out how in the world that was even possible. So let me get it to zoom. I was looking at it and it was smoking all around the edge, but I didn't see anything. So I went to unplug it and when I did, you guys can see that. So I'm gonna get the focus in. Okay, watch it, watch it, watch it. You can see that thing is, the whole cap of that thing is cracked. All the way around there is cracked and leaking. So that is a humongous vacuum leak. And the guy, I, I'll have to find his name in the, the, uh, the old comment section, but he was dead on. That, that, that screw was completely missing and that was leaking like crazy. So we got that leak sorted out. Now we got this leak. So we got this leak, and it looks like I may have another leak over here. It's coming from yet. That's a pretty big vacuum leak as well. Cool. 
it's coming out of the it's coming out of the intake. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. That tube right there snakes backing up under the intake and goes basically right in here. And it's only held in by a rubber grommet or rubber O-ring. And I can't imagine it's ever gonna seal well because you can't get in there and tighten it up. There's no clamp holding it. It just kind of lays in there. So that one, I don't know what we're gonna do with yet. But I do know we've got to get a new one of these once I figure out what it's called tonight. We'll go ahead and order that. I need to order the proper screw that goes in right there. And I think that will possibly be all the parts we're gonna need. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to get the tubing to put this sucker back on, whatever the world that is. I'm not sure what it is, but I need to get it on the car. And I believe, guys, that's gonna be it as far as hard parts at this moment. So we'll get that valve, whatever in the world that is, and try to get its tube back up in there and sealed. But I'm gonna start it up as is and see if we've made any progress. See if it at least try to idle, not just start up and shut off, start up and shut off. I'm thinking we've fixed about 70% of what was wrong. I don't know what part that valve plays in the whole startup and idle process. I will go home tonight, research it. Once again, I am no, no professional when it comes to these old Bosch motors or these Bosch injected motors. But I do know the basics, spark, fuel, and air. And um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up everything that we've done. We're gonna take the smoke machine out of the system, put the vacuum lines back on and start it up. So I will turn this back on the moment I do that. Well guys, we did it. I promised you I'd get this thing running by the end of the day on its own and it's running, not running great, not running fantastic smoother than it was last time idle settled down but as you can see she's a little shaky little rocky but with that valve over there sucking in all sorts of air I'm imagining we're still gonna have that problem until I get it fixed but it's running it's running on its own It's a little hard to start but I do I did get it started I didn't have to switch the valve cool thing is I did not have to switch the harnesses this started all on its own with that cold start valve that leads me to believe that we're heading in the right direction as far as what we're doing here I'm going to clean up some other stuff tonight just kind of work and do random stuff you guys don't care about you don't even need to see but I'm gonna go home and see if I can order that thing tonight and if I can if we can get that screw wait for those to come in we're kind of stuck with that part, but what I will do is I'll go ahead and work on the brakes, getting them put back on the car, and easy process, just so easy. So any of you guys that may have any more ideas, the one guy that, that told me about the screw, man, I, uh, I owe you a big thank you because I don't think I would have found that otherwise. Don't know why it's missing. You pay all that money to get the thing rebuilt, and he did such a good job everywhere else. Why not put that screw back in it? Did he? Is it an oversight? Is that how they send it back? I don't know. I, I just truly don't know. I'm, I'm assuming yes. I, I don't know, but that's fixed. The uh, the car runs halfway decent. Doesn't take throttle for nothing. I mean, it, it'll die as soon as I put my gap my foot on the gas. So I'm assuming there's an air fuel mixture problem. Let's see, once it gets warmed up, see what it does. It's actually taking throttle decent today. You see, as it's coming up, as it's, as it's revving up, it's breaking up a little bit. It sounds better than it ever has before. So we're heading in the right direction. I'm gonna double check the firing order. It almost sounds like it's missing on one plug. If that's the case, that'll explain a lot of what we got going on. I'm gonna double check that here in a little bit, let it cool down some. I promise you'll be running for the end of the day, and it is. Kinda of lucked into it. I can't say that it was all on me trying to figure it out. Luckily it was from some of you. 
one of you guys pointed me in the right directions there. So I don't know what else to say other than we got it running. We'll try to get the brakes on it. Hopefully by the end of the week, I'm gonna have to find all my hardware. That they've been off for a year, so I can't imagine where that stuff's gonna be. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw today, give me a like, give me a subscribe. We're gonna have a lot more projects in the future, but in the meantime, we'll be doing this. So thanks guys and night.